Hello aspirants, welcome back to the daily news analysis, The Hindu. So this is a free initiative brought to you by Transform IS Academy. In this video session, we shall be looking into those articles which shall be extremely important for the civil service exam. So let's begin with our discussion for 12th of December 2018. So on the 12th of December, since it was an elections in terms of the state levels, the state legislative assembly, so there is no important news for today. So whatever has been there, we have just taken to the most important one and the other things it's been just left. So most of it, the Hindu newspaper today was been covered with the uh, no, a kinds of an uh, election results and other things. So on Lamlet of it, the first one under page one was speaking on Shakti Kanta Das appointed as RBI governor. So we know that yesterday, Mr. Uh, RBI governor, that is uh, Ujit Patel, he had actually resigned from the post on Lamlet of it. Now the appointment committee of the cabinet has given an approval for the appointment of the former bureaucrat, that is Shakti Kantan. So he is a bureaucrat and he, this person who would be taking the charge to be as a governor of the RBI and he is the 25th governor of the RBI. So this was actually been appointed after the resignation by the Modi administration. So this is there and uh, it is actually the problem we thought was it is a deputy governor Mr. Swaminathan. He had the chances to appoint to get appointed to be as a RBI governor but here the Modi government had decided and they have fixed the bureaucrat. So why they have taken this decision is because he, he is a retired IS officer, he is a former secretary for the Department of Economic Affairs as well. And apart from that, he is also a person who has been a member of the 15th Finance Commission of India and he also represents India at the G20 in the role of Sherpa. So taking these into consideration, this person is now being appointed by the Modi government as the RBI governor and this is for the time period of three years and the same notification has been issued by the Department of Personal and Training that is DOPT. So this has been there and here the government that is also said that they enjoy the government trust. So this is this person who is a top people in the governments actually they trust the person because of the delivery of the work what he has done in the past and they also feel that to whatever the decision has been taken from the PMO that the ministers, Prime Minister's office and the Finance Ministry had put this bureaucrat in charge. So this is the kinds of an background of this particular person, Mr. Shanti Kantan Das. So he actually belongs to the 1998 CADO, that is the Tamil Nadu CADO. So he's been taken from there. So this is, I'm sorry, 1980 batch. So this is about the basics of this particular person. So this is what you have to know. And the second news which talks on don't reveal the identity of rape victims the supreme court and this is directly moving on to page nine as i said it was full of the you know kinds of um, advertisements and also the news which was related to the elections and since it's a delhi edition so that was been filled up with that so don't reveal the identity of the rape victim victim says the supreme court so this is the supreme court on tuesday it actually prohibited the media from publishing or hearing the names or any material which may be even remotely reveal the identity of the victims of their sexual crimes. So this is basically with the Supreme Court which is saying that here the media are not supposed to reveal the identity of the victims who have been under the sexual crimes. So here, here the Supreme Court is trying to safeguard them from all spears to where they will not be having. So here no person either in terms of print or publish in the print, electronic or social media, etc. The name of the victim or even the remote manner. So any of these would not be able to disclose to what is the person's identity and they are not supposed to make it reveal when it comes to the public at the large. So here this kinds of, enru I mean the Supreme Court order is actually barring to extend any of the identity of the victims. So this is what has been coming from the bench of Justice Madan B. Lokar and also Mr. Deepak Gupta. So this particular kinds of an disclosure is being barred under the section 228A clause 2 of the IPC as this is not been confined to just the name of the victim but also actually meant that the identity of the victim should not be discernible from any matter published in the media. So here to whatever the Supreme Court is barring the media from doing it, it is taking the support of the section 228A2 of the IPC. 
and the main intention is that here they wanted to give the support to the victims and also to make them that they would not be facing any of the hostile discrimination or harassments in the future so whatever they have been facing right now let them have the courage to come and approach before the courts and also ensure that they will not be having any sort of an hostile of discrimination and harassments in the future and the special cases where they would be having the identity of the victim like the person or a victim who has been dead or as an unsound mind even at those circumstances they will not be able to disclose even after getting the authorization from the next kid so even in the special cases the supreme court has barred that they would not be able to disclose any of the identification of the person except on the competent authority so this is on certain exceptions of the competent authority this is what the session judge has to say and apart from that it also barred the police from putting in public domain the fir's either under section 376 to 376e so that is purely they talk on the range of the sexual offenses under the ipc and those under the protection of the children from the sexual offenses act and more importantly the documents to whatever they get to disclose about the victim it should be only in the sealed cover and that sealed cover should be kept in secret and it cannot reveal any of the identity and moreover it also made it very clear that if at all a victim wants to mourn for an appeal then the victim is free by not even mentioning the name so they need not reveal her identity identity while even filing an appeal so that is also another kind of an benefit to what the supreme court had given so it is trying to protect the sexual crimes people as a victim so that they would be coming forward to the courts and also ensure that they would not be having any bar so they would be getting the justice to what they actually demand for so it is kind of a protection to what the supreme court has now taken a viewpoint where it can support them from all means and all those things has been listed out here and the judgment actually it came after a writ petition which was been filed by the nipun saxena where he highlighted there is a high need for protecting the identity of the adult and the child victims of the rapes and sexual abuse so they don't get faced with a ridicule ostracization and also with the harassment so they will not been subject to any further kind of a problem is what here the advocate had actually filed a writ petition on lamlet of this is what the supreme court has done the same so this is on that so there's something uh, a kind of in protections which has been given to the people out there so this is that and the next news under the page 9 which talks on the supreme court directs the center to declare a 10 km area around the national park as eco sensitive areas so here the supreme court is actually directing the union environment ministry so where they have to start declaring the 10 km area around 21 national parks and the wildlife sanctuary across the country as eco sensitive zones so this is what the supreme court has actually directed the ministry to ensure that they would be declaring those areas of a wide of 10 km as a eco sensitive zones so this is based on the amicus curiae which is informed to the court that the state government have not taken any of the effort to protect the areas under the sanctuaries and also with the parks So the court recorded the issue which has been pending from the past 12 years on lamlet of it these are the important national parks which would be listed Patibora Pavitora National Park in Assam Hemis and Chishwar National Parks then we have the Chanstang Horek Star Tirtukta National Park in Jammu and Kashmir Jogimatti and all these others which has been listed out here so these are the ones which would be taken under the lamlet and the court also ordered the center to make the declaration at the earliest as the plea if at all they have to go for any modifications by the state concerned should be made to the environment ministry within next week so and after the next hearing of the same matter would be held on 2019 of february so at that point of time they would be discussing in detail so as of now the supreme court has actually directed the center to declare the national parks areas to be as eco sensitive zones as there is no proper effort to protect the area has been done on the sanctuaries and the parks so this is that so you have the list of the sanctuaries but instead of going through like this make a entire list of the sanctuaries which has been there in india and start memorizing from there so that becomes a kind of an question where probability might be there for your preliminary examination so that the prelims would becomes easier for you all if you know about the national parks so these bits and pieces might be confusing rather google up the entire national park and start preparing for yourself so that is on that 
so we go on to page 14 so here it was a USA was hearing on the religious freedom in India where it was been postponed and it has been rescheduled for May 13 so why was this particular thing was been postponed because of the overwhelming response for what it got from the stakeholders so this is actually the bipartisan hearing on the religious freedom in India so this has been there and this is the hearing which is actually been titled to be as freedom of religion or or the belief in India where it is rising challenges and the new opportunity for the US policy so this has actually been announced on December 4th when they came on by the organization that is the U US Commission on International Religious Freedom so this is actually actually the independent federal government commission so bipartisan so this is what they have been titled to be as in freedom of religion or belief in India so here the hearing had to be rescheduled on May 13th as we discussed because of the overwhelming response to what it actually received so that they are actually planning to set up a picker accommodation for the attendees and also the participants so which is going to be in a larger extent and here there is a serious violation to what they are discussing on that is on to the 2018 USCIRF annual report which actually placed India under tier 2 so which is actually the list of nations in which the violations which has been engaged in or tolerated by the government during the 2017 so this tier 2 is all about those kinds of countries which would be listed for the violations engaged in or that are tolerated by the government during the 2017 are serious and it has been characterized at least one of the elements of systematic ongoing and egregious CPC that is a country of a particular concern or we can also call it to be as a tier 1 country. So this is as per the standard to what is being set. So this is under the serious violations which has been taken into consideration. And you should also know that India has been under this category since 2009. So it is not only in 2017, it is from long time since 2009 India has been under the category of this particular tier 1. And moreover, they are also been talking with respect to in 2017 the actors tied where with respect to Hindu extremist groups where they have been regularly harassed intimidated perpetrated violence against the hindu dalits or the muslims christians and the sikhs where these people have been completely been you know uh, discriminated or they have been harassed by the other people hindu extremist so up uh, this is there and the anti-conversion and anti-slaughter that is a cow slaughter laws were also routinely used for discriminating the against the religious minorities so we know that now there is a lot of issues which has been pertaining to the cow slaughter on lamlet of this is what they have been discussing that neither the claw i mean the issue with respect to the cow slaughter or the anti-conversion has actually been increased where they have been discriminating the religious minorities or they have been subjected to the judicial violence as well so this has been there and this is what they are going to discuss again which has been a continued issue in 2018 so this would be a part of the reasoning for holding a hearing in india and here the commission will also hear the witness representation broad array for perspective about india as well so this has been there and noble tradition is that as a world's largest democracy that is india has been actually claimed to be so it is a tro noble tradition for inter-religious harmony so it also has to talk on the ahimsa which has also been been very democratic country with non-violence tolerance and pluralism that is being threatened today to whatever india has been encountered all these years to be either in terms of the democracy or it has been a religious harmony non-violence the tolerance and the pluralism so now it has been threatened as of now so it also said that the new date had been picked up keeping the schedule of the eight u.s that is with respect to CIRF some commissioners in a mind in addition to the scale with the response to what has been there and here they were even wanted to inclusive the possible in this process so they would be able to do the much more better aspect. Ms. Boyle also confirmed that there was no considerations of the annual report where the US CIRF report were published each year on May 1st. So this is on the India's elections hearing which will not be postponed as such. So this is there. So basically they would be talking about the religious freedoms which has been done in India and what are the problems associated. So as of now it is on May 13th is what it has been postponed. So this is there and the next news was with respect to page 14 you had the coverage of the 
Koshoge among the journalists. So they've been honored by time. So this is basically with respect to different con different countries from I mean different people from different countries where the journalist has actually been under a limelight or they've been recognized and ordered by the Time magazine. So here they are being picked up with few of the important names like the most important ones like Jamal Khashoggi who has been dead as of now, he has been murdered and the pair of Rajors journalists who have been imprisoned in Myanmar, these people and apart from that a person of the year. So that these people would be given with a cover story of their headline where the guardians and the war on the truth. So these uh, basically it is with respect to forecasting and limelighting those journalists who had given their life and also the people who have been taking the uh, I mean that wanted to get the truth before the people and limelight of it what are the other problems these people would be encountering. So that has been there. So this is the Time magazine which has been trying to honor. So here they have said that the main thing is that they want they have actually chosen to honor the journalism at time when the practice is critical to democracy which has been under a threat from the government or the technological advances to whatever the democracy have they been talking. So it has been a critical practice for the journalism as they have to be uh, getting the things under limelight at the same time they have been under the threat either from the government or from the technological advances. So on limelight of it, this is what these people would be recognized and the honor is also being, being given to them by the time maximum. So that's it. So this is just with respect to the encountering of the issues which has been happening to the journalism in the nook and corners of the country. The journalist which has been the subject to the murder and also the assault and also for the jail perspectives. So this is on that as uh, the business column that was being filled up with the appointment of Mr. Shanti, Shanti Kartan Das, so who was the former bureaucrat. So that news you will be having in the business columns completely it was been only talking about that and also to why Mr. you know Raghuram Rat, I'm sorry Ujjit Patel had actually resigned the post. So that was only the coverage the things what you had it. So I have not picked up them if you really want them to be noticed. So that is there in the newspaper where the history of Mr. Newly Appointed Governor has been given there. So if you want you can go through with that. So that is on that and lastly moving on to page 18. So this was with respect to water traces found at the asteroid Bennu. So this is an asteroid Bennu. So here we know that the NASA Osiris Rex spacecraft was actually a moved on and now this one has discovered the ingredients of water on a nearby skyscraper sized asteroid. So this is actually a cone shaped object to what they call it as and near they are saying that they have got the possible hold clues where the origin of the life on the earth scientists which they found it on. So this Osiris Rex which has been flown last week they have been encountering that asteroid Bennu that 2.25 million kilometers away from the earth. So here they found out the traces of the hydrogen and oxygen molecules so which is a part of the recipes. So this is something what it has been found and they also said that this asteroid has been embedded with a rocky surface and here you should also know that the mission to return the samples from the asteroid to the earth for the study was launched in 2016 and the Bennu orbits the sun as good as with the same distance of the earth as well. So there's no differences as similar to roughly to how at the sun the earth has the distance the same distance as what the Bennu asteroid is also been having and the Osirex will pass later this month with 1.9 kilometer from the Bennu. So the spacecraft will also later fly back to the earth with all those kinds of information to what it has to get and jettisoning a capsule bearing the asteroid specimen in September 2023. So this is with respect to the Bennu which has found that there is a presence of hydrogen and oxygen molecule. The traces has been found and apart from that the other got the details with respect to Bennu as well. So that's it. So this is again a news which has been continuously there in your uh, newspapers and this covers your GS3 which is under your science and technology. So this becomes important for us to understand as this is repeatedly there in the news. So this is if you, you you should have the content by now the Osiris Rex so it's all about it. So as I discussed earlier since it was the election results which was being announced it was only those coverage to what has been there in the entire newspaper so there's no any other news uh, content which we really we need to focus on. So that's it. So these were the ones and the question for the day global soil biodiversity atlas is prepared by 
So it's the European Commission Joint Center, the World Economic Outlook, UNFCC and none. So that's it. So these were the important articles which has been discussed at the video. So these were the ones. So hope this video would actually help you all in your preparations and work hard till you accomplish. Thank you and have a nice day.